As you've probably noticed by now, a lot of my videos have a historical component to them. That's because I personally adore history, having studied it for years. Today's video is no exception. When I went on Twitter a couple of days ago, I noticed something peculiar. The stars of Will and Grace were asking for a Hollywood blacklist, but not really. Now blacklisting? That's definitely worth a roasted opinion or two. Way back in 1945, at the start of the Cold War, the House Un-American Activities Committee started to investigate anyone and everyone on which they could lay their hands. Their purpose was to identify possible propaganda and acts of subversion against the U.S. government. At least, that was their purpose on paper. In practice, however, HUAC was a huge part of the Red Scare which arose during the start of the Atomic Age. By 1947, Huac had crafted a list of writers, producers, and directors who supposedly had communist leanings, and the list just kept growing. Over 300 names were on the blacklist before Huac was through. But openly hiring a known member of the blacklist before 1957 risked a subpoena from Huac and being yet another name added to the blacklist. Some of the biggest names in Hollywood were on that list. Others, like Lucille Ball, nearly ended up on it. Desi Arnaz's defense of his wife after the news broke that she had met with members of HUAC privately to discuss her membership in the Communist Party two decades earlier remains a classic statement from the HUAC era. And now, Desi said, I want you to meet my favorite wife, my favorite redhead. In fact, that's the only thing read about her, and even that's not legitimate. Lucille Ball. That's how scary the Hollywood blacklist was to artists and their careers. Lucy was the biggest star on television at the time, and I Love Lucy, one of the most successful and influential television shows of all time, could have been canceled overnight. Lucy and Desi may have never worked in Hollywood again. Now think about the impact of that. I Love Lucy introduced the three-camera technique for filming sitcoms. The major studios at the time did not want to use that technique. It was too risky and too expensive, in their opinion. So Desi and Lucy started Desilu Studios, the same studios which eventually produced a sci-fi series entitled Star Trek. The impact of the destruction of Lucy's career by Huac would have been enormous. By 1957, America had recognized that Huac had gone too far. In 1962, John Henry Falk won his lawsuit against Aware, an organization who contributed to the blacklisting of Falk and others. And that should have been the end of such activities. It wasn't Hollywood that was acting un-American, but the House Un-American Activities Committee. Blacklisting is wrong. Thanks to Falk's lawsuit in 1962, it is now also legally actionable. Fast forward 57 years, and it seems that some folks have forgotten all of this. Deborah Messing and Eric McCormick, the stars of Will and Grace, asked on Twitter for a list of attendees to the Trump rally in Beverly Hills that is upcoming. Why? Because they have a right to know who supports Trump. Donor information is public information, after all. Big donor information is a matter of public record. However, they asked for a list of attendees. Um, no. Just, no. These tweets received swift and scathing condemnation, and they should have. The two stars swiftly backtracked, saying in a pair of follow-up tweets that they condemn blacklisting, but they have a right to know who supports Trump. We don't support blacklisting, but we have a right to know who we are working with in Hollywood. Is that it, Will and Grace? Do you have a right to effectively destroy the careers of people who support the wrong politician? What's next? A standing committee in Congress who will decide which people can work in entertainment based on their endorsements of Trump? How did Deborah and Eric miss the parallel here? There's already a long list of Hollywood Republicans. Those individuals already have trouble finding parts in movies and television. No one seems to mind that, either. They are deemed difficult to work with and passed over. Production companies avoid scripts from writers and working with directors deemed too politically controversial because they have to get the films distributed. If their films do manage to see distribution, then they are panned by the critics. For that matter, it seems that any film which isn't sufficiently woke these days gets trashed by the critics, 
no matter what the audience thinks. And to top everything off, the vertical integration of Hollywood's companies means that every aspect of the industry is highly interconnected. An argument could be made that the critics are independent. But then again, Comcast owns many of the companies for which those critics work. And they also own a controlling stake in Fandango, which owns Rotten Tomatoes, which aggregates critic reviews. Comcast also owns NBC Universal, which owns NBC News, CNBC, MSNBC, Telemundo, Bravo, E, and Oxygen. They also own a third of Hulu and a chunk of Vox Media. They jointly own major media properties with Warner Media, which is owned by AT&T. AT&T in turn owns CNN, and don't even get me started about Disney. If we look at the big six companies in U.S. broadcast media, which is really just five since CBS Corporation and Viacom are both subsidiaries of national amusements and are in the process of merging again for the second time, 90% or more of all legacy broadcast media is owned by just five companies. The U.S. music industry is effectively run by four companies. This pattern repeats throughout all forms of media in the U.S., from print media to social media. Think that it's different in other countries? Think again. Add together the eight global conglomerates who own the bulk of international media and you will discover just how much unity of ownership there really is in all forms of media worldwide. Now take a wild guess in which city all of those conglomerates can be found operating together. That's right. Hollywood, California, the very same place where Deborah and Eric want a list of all the people who attend a Beverly Hills fundraiser for Trump. But it's not a blacklist. They condemn blacklisting. Okay, so I have a simple question, Will and Grace. Can you tell me why you want such a list published if it isn't to shame or financially harm those who attend the rally? Because that makes it a blacklist.